Tonight, the beginning of what's set to be the biggest battle over abortion rights since the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Protests over a judge's ruling that would halt the use of the abortion pill. Some health care providers now stockpiling the drug. The Biden administration vowing today to fight the decision, as some Democrats call on the president to simply not enforce any ban. Everything is on the table. Political firestorm in Tennessee. Why at least one of the Democratic lawmakers expelled by Republicans there may be back in his seat tomorrow. Standoff at sea. Navy ships from Taiwan and China face off as China launches massive war games, including this simulation showing how they could strike the island. Growing violence in the Middle East. Israel attacked by rockets from inside Syria. The retaliation tonight. Should this convicted killer walk free, the governor of Texas vows to pardon a U.S. Army sergeant who shot a Black Lives Matter protester. On this Easter Sunday, the Pope's message to the world just a week after leaving the hospital. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening and happy Easter to you. The decision from a federal judge in Texas Friday is still reverberating as we head into a new week. That judge suspended the FDA's approval of the abortion pill. The president has vowed his administration will fight that decision. Any appeal must be filed by Friday. The pills are already banned in the 13 states that have made abortion illegal. If this ruling were to hold up, the pills would then be banned nationwide. The anti-abortion groups that brought the lawsuit argue the drug is not safe. The White House says if a judge can overrule the FDA on this medication, any judge could ban any drug. We begin tonight with Ali Rafa. Tonight, battle lines drawn. I'm very worried about the women who need this medication. We applaud the judge's action to issue the stay on the chemical abortion drug Mifepristone. <laughs> After the most consequential abortion ruling since the reversal of Roe v. Wade, a Texas federal judge suspending FDA approval of the most commonly used abortion pill, giving the federal government seven days to appeal before the ruling goes into effect. We intend to do everything to make sure it's uh, available to them, not just in a week, but moving forward, period. Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra vowing the Biden administration is considering all legal options. Well, we've already filed an appeal of this court's ruling. The issue will likely be decided by the Supreme Court after a federal judge in Washington state ruled to protect the drug in more than a dozen states. One Republican lawmaker threatening cuts to FDA funding if the White House fights the Texas ruling. It may be a come a point where House Republicans on the appropriation side have to defund uh, FDA programs that don't make sense. Some health care providers are now stockpiling the pill, fearing an all out ban while some Democrats urge the Biden administration to go even further. I believe that the Biden administration should ignore uh, this ruling. It is up to the Biden administration to enforce, to choose whether or not to enforce such a ruling. HHS Secretary Becerra not committing to that specific option. Every option is on the table. And Ali joins us now from the White House. Ali, will the drugs still be available as this case makes its way through the courts? Well, legal experts say the drug will likely remain available as these cases make their way through the courts, a process that could take months, possibly even years, Kate. All right, Ali Rafa at the White House for us. Thank you. Tomorrow could be a pivotal day for at least one of the two Tennessee lawmakers expelled last week. The two were kicked out of their state legislature for their roles in leading a protest on the House floor. Now one may be about to get his seat back. Kathy Park has the latest. Tonight, two Tennessee lawmakers fighting to take back their seat. That the people will hold them accountable, um, both at the county level and in the special election. They are afraid of the changes that are happening in our society and the voices that are being elevated. No action! No the GOP-controlled state house expelled Democratic representatives Justin Jones and Justin Pearson for breaking the rules as they rallied for tougher gun control measures. Rule. It's now up to local leaders to in their now. districts to pick their replacements until a special election that is yet to be announced. On Monday, the Metro Nashville Council will weigh in, and so far at least 23 members vowed to reappoint Representative Jones. Representative Pearson's fate lies with the Shelby County Board of Commissioners, and their meeting is still in the works. On this Easter Sunday, he addressed his former constituents at church. 
the supermajority Republican legislature decided that it was time for us to go because it was, in our opinion, time to listen. These men, along with Gloria Johnson, make up the Tennessee Three. The trio thrust into the national spotlight for speaking out after the mass shooting at the Covenant School in Nashville. Johnson was also up for expulsion, but survived the vote. It might have to do with the color of our skin. Our members literally didn't look at the ethnicity of the members that were up for expulsion. Emotions running high, likely stretching through the week and beyond. Kathy Park, NBC News. It may be the biggest U.S. intelligence breach since Edward Snowden leaked top secret documents back in 2013. Tonight, the search is on for whoever revealed classified documents online, many of them focused on Russia and Ukraine's military capabilities. Matt Bradley is tracking it all from Kiev. Matt? Yeah, Kate, a senior U.S. intelligence official told NBC News tonight that these documents with regard to the war in Ukraine are real that they may have been altered in certain parts, particularly with regard to estimates of Ukrainian casualties. And now the Justice Department is joining the Pentagon and trying to find out who was responsible for these leaks and if that person or people work for the U.S. government. And these documents reveal some interesting clues about Ukrainian and Russian military capabilities that haven't been published before. But Kate, the real impact here is going to be on American intelligence gathering and capabilities. They really show the reach of America's eyes and ears, spying not just on enemies, but also on allies. And that could have a big impact or cause tensions with some of America's partners. Kate. Matt Bradley for us. Matt, thank you. Tensions are rising in Taiwan as China began a second day of drills around the island that it claims as its own territory. The show of force coming just as a U.S. delegation wrapped up days of high-level meetings in Taiwan. Courtney Kuby reports from inside Taiwan. On the second day of military exercises, a major escalation. Chinese military jets practice strikes against key targets in Taiwan. A defense ministry graphic showing a barrage of missiles fired from air, land and sea, at least one simulated strike that seems to target the capital city, Taipei. Another 70 Chinese aircraft reported flying near Taiwan and now 11 warships encircling it, training for a naval blockade. Taiwan's military saying they have monitored the situation and tasked our assets to respond, deeming the Chinese activities provocative and displaying some of their own military might today. Taiwan's Coast Guard releasing video of what appears to be a tense standoff with a Chinese warship, the Taiwanese ship warning the Chinese to turn around. The exercise in response to days of U.S. congressional leaders meeting with senior Taiwanese government officials. China saying this is a serious warning about Taiwan working with outside forces. What does Taiwan really need to deter uh, an attack or an invasion by China? They need alliances. Uh, they need the weapons that I've signed off three to five years ago that have yet to go into country. Uh, and, and they need a will to fight. And they will get that will to fight if they know the United States is backing them. Monday, the third and final day of the exercise, and now this question. Have they saved the largest or most provocative action for last? Courtney Kuby, NBC News, Taipei, Taiwan. Violence in the Middle East is spreading tonight. Israel's military says it retaliated against targets inside Syria after Palestinian militants based there launched rockets into Israel. That follows escalating rounds of violence between Israel and Palestinian groups in recent days. On this Easter Sunday, a moment so many had waited for, tens of thousands got the chance to see Pope Francis. The 86-year-old pontiff just recently left the hospital. He appeared frail but never faltered. Ann Thompson is in Vatican City and has more on the Pope's message of peace. Pope Francis making a comeback this Holy Week, culminating in Easter Sunday Mass on St. Peter's Square. Brought to the altar by wheelchair, the Pope stood unaided at times. And his voice was strong a week after he was hospitalized for bronchitis. The Pope's health tracked closely by President Biden, says U.S. Ambassador to the Vatican Joe Donnelly. Throughout the Pope's illness, um, we would hear, could you give the president an update because he's concerned about his friend. Despite his illness, the Pope met all his Holy Week obligations but one. We saw him full of energy, connecting with the people as he is wont to do, uh, and I think energized for what will be a busy year ahead for him. 
a papacy many came here to celebrate. I love him. I, you know, I keep saying Viva il Papa. So <laughs> we love him. Yeah, he's wonderful. We wonderful. love his Franciscan ways yes. and his simple lifestyle. Fratelli, sorelle. In his Easter message, Francis prayed for peace in Ukraine. It was very, very clear. He reached out to the Russian people saying, in effect, end this. The Pope also focused his global spotlight on other conflicts, including Jerusalem, Lebanon, and Nicaragua, all the while the world watched for signs of his help. Kate? Ann Thompson for us, Ann, thank you. Coming up, should this killer be freed? Why the governor of Texas is promising to pardon a man convicted of murdering a Black Lives Matter protester. We're back with a murder conviction controversy. Texas Governor Greg Abbott said yesterday that he would pardon a man just found guilty of killing an armed protester at a Black Lives Matter demonstration. At the heart of it all, the state's stand your ground law. Dana Griffin reports. Tonight, controversy in Texas after Governor Greg Abbott called for the pardon of U.S. Army Sergeant Daniel Perry, who shot and killed Air Force veteran Garrett Foster during this July 2020 Black Lives Matter protest in Austin. <laughs> Nearly three years after his death, justice came Friday for Garrett's fiance and the Foster family. The jury found the defendant Daniel Perry guilty of the offense of murder. His fiance writing on Instagram, I love you and miss you so much. This is extremely wrong. That's that's all I have to say right now. <laughs> Perry has maintained the shooting was self-defense. I saw him raise his weapon. That's why I grabbed my revolver. Foster was openly carrying an AK-47 during the protest, which is legal in the state. Perry's defense arguing the shooting was justified under the state's stand your ground law. But witnesses say Perry was the instigator. The driver of this vehicle intentionally and aggressively accelerated into a crowd of people. Perry hasn't been sentenced yet, but Governor Abbott directed the state's parole board to expedite review of Perry's conviction. Posting to Twitter, I look forward to approving the board's pardon recommendation as soon as it hits my desk. Unlike presidential power in Texas, the parole board must first recommend a pardon before the governor can act raising the question, will the board grant it? The county's former assistant district attorney tells me, yes. I fully expect that a pardon will be issued, but it's not gonna happen anytime fast. Governor Abbott has proposed short-circuiting the entire criminal justice system solely to benefit one individual. Garrett's family is asking the governor to reconsider. Before he lets out somebody who was just found guilty of murder and lets him off, he really needs to look into exactly what happened. Dana Griffin, NBC News. Still ahead, the high cost of dollar stores. The bargain retailers are popping up everywhere. Why some communities are now trying to keep them out. Also, the tornadoes tore apart their towns, but not their spirit. The communities finding hope and healing on this Easter Sunday. You've probably noticed the explosive growth of dollar stores. In some neighborhoods, there are several within just blocks of each other. But those cheap prices may come at a larger cost. And now communities are pushing back, trying to keep the stores out. Zinclay Esamwa explains why. Jean Ann Thomas Botley has shopped at Family Food Center in Toledo, Ohio, since she was four years old. This is the place to be. Once you find something that you love mm. and treat you with respect, but today, the 58-year-old worries dollar stores are now threatening this local staple. It's supposed to be a store to help the community, but it's taken from the community. At the start of 2022, dollar stores together operated more than 34,000 stores nationwide. That's more than McDonald's, Walmart, Target, and Starbucks combined. Right here in Toledo, Ohio, when it comes to dollar stores, there are one. Here's another. Two. And here's another one, number three. Altogether, over 35. In March, advocacy group the Institute for Local Self-Reliance published a study on the impact of dollar stores on predominantly rural, low-income, Black, and Latino neighborhoods. Its findings? When they come into a community, they tend to just pull just enough of the sales away from that grocery store. We have to call the suppliers ask them for prices, ask them for deals, and they don't offer us as good deals as the big chains. Thank you. 
Now a small community in Toledo, led by senior pastor Donald Perryman, is fighting this effort. This was the pride of Toledo. It was, it was a community where black dollars circulated, black wealth developed, black professionals were. And today, what is it like? Deserted and abandoned. Perryman hopes Toledo will join the more than 50 cities already enacting laws limiting dollar store expansion. The study also found that as local groceries get squeezed out, neighborhoods are left with food deserts, areas with limited access to affordable, nutritious food. Even when a Dollar General has fresh produce, it's not a full supply, correct? Correct. So we have about 16 feet typically in most stores of fresh produce. Do you think your supply of produce is enough to adequately feed and provide the nutrients communities need? Well, I think it's really important to remember Dollar General is not a grocer. We are here to be able to provide the general necessities that families need on everyday basis. In a statement to NBC News, two other national dollar chains, Dollar Tree and Family Dollar, said in part, our stores complement grocery stores and bring economic development to communities we enter, including helping to alleviate the effects of food deserts in urban communities. As for Family General Food Center, ESO says the prices are no match for the people. I know half of my customers by name. When they walk in, I greet them by name. I don't think they can get that service at a dollar store. Because all the time we walk, I get emotional just talking about because they are family. Hmm. They are. What are you thinking about? What are you feeling? Because it's grace in here. It's grace. They let you be yourself. Even if you're going through it. Zinclair Samoa, NBC News, Toledo, Ohio. When we come back on this Easter Sunday, the tornadoes destroyed their church, but their faith still stands. There's good news on this Easter Sunday about hope and healing. Our Priscilla Thompson spent the day in one community hit hard by recent tornadoes, and now they're finding comfort and faith in each other. At the New Commandment Church of God in Christ in Jacksonville, Arkansas, this is what joy and celebration sound like. This community recently lost its church after a tornado ripped through the area more than a week ago. How many know that we're better together? We are better together. But on this Easter Sunday, holding services outside, Pastor Eddie Miller says faith here is stronger than ever. As we think about resurrection and hope, what do those themes mean to you in this moment? In this very moment, resurrection means to come back alive when this happened. And I saw a lot of despair, but then when they get to this church, people smile again. So resurrection and hope means that, hey, we're, we're alive. Happy Resurrection Day! Hope for recovery after recent violent tornadoes devastated so many places. From Iowa... Dude, stop, stop! ...to Delaware. Captain, get in here. But in the midst of tragedy, people are uniting to help those who lost so much. Across Mississippi, kind strangers delivering Easter baskets to kids in towns where there was almost nothing left. Happy Easter. And in Indiana, six-year-old Jacob Harris wanted to help his neighbors in the city of Sullivan. So he packed up a truck, donating nearly 400 Easter baskets. Back in Arkansas, worshipers here praying for brighter days ahead. A lot of people that was hope, you know, hopeless, they could be hopeful, you know, that we could still come together as one. The community full of resilience. We will come back. We will be even stronger because of our faith. Beyond the shadow of devastation here, there is light and song. We still have hope because God is still doing things and he has great plans for us. The building is destroyed, but the church remains strong. Priscilla Thompson, NBC News, Jacksonville, Arkansas. Pastor Miller says they hope to start rebuilding their church just as soon as possible. And we'd like to wish all of you a happy Easter, Passover, and Ramadan. That is NBC Nightly News on this Sunday. Lester Holt will be with you tomorrow. I'm Kate Snow. For all of us here at NBC News, stay safe and have a great night.
Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.